Hi there, we're ready to get started today with um, today's webinar with Kyle James. We will be talking about the interactive campus map, an essential recruitment tool. I'm Madeline Sinkowski. I'm the community manager over at Ed Social Media, and I'll be moderating today's event as Kyle walks you through the key components of interactive campus maps. Um, we're set to talk with Kyle James, and he'll, he will um, talk with us about the importance of creating and using an interactive campus map and provide great insight to the value and return on investment. If you're tweeting about today's webinar, um, you can use Kyle's handle, which is at Kyle James, um, and be sure to include the hashtag, uh, hashtag EdSocialMedia, so we can all follow along and answer your questions and interact with each other along the way. So feel free to use Twitter as a forum for questions, or if you have any um, other ones that you want to ask privately, you can let us know in the questions section in the um, GoToMeeting control panel. I'll be monitoring those questions throughout the presentation, and Kyle will periodically um, check in with us to make sure if there are any questions coming up. So if all goes according to plan, we will have a recorded version of today's webinar for you to view later. Um, I'll also send a follow-up email with uh, Kyle's contact information in addition to um, any other links to a blog post and hopefully a Storify as well. So if you're not familiar with Kyle, he is a great resource and an expert digital marketer. He spent six years as a webmaster for a small liberal, liberal arts school before he went on to work for HubSpot, a leading inbound marketing company. He founded .edu Guru, a fantastic higher education web development and marketing website, and he's presented at numerous conferences across the nation. He's currently the CEO and co-founder of NewCloud, an interactive campus map platform, which is exactly why we've asked him to present today um, to talk about his current expertise. So Kyle, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me today, Madeline. Uh, Interactive maps is definitely one of those things that I, that I definitely love, as, as you kind of mentioned. I've done a little bit of everything and have a lot of experience kind of in the higher education experience. So I'm really glad to, to really talk about it from that. And, you know, although I'm the, the CEO here of New Cloud, um, I don't really want to try to sell you on what we do. I really want to keep this on, you know, here is why this is an essential recruitment tool. Here's things you need to think about. Here's things you want to look at. Um, so, you know, if you've got any questions, absolutely feel free to reach out to me, um, Kyle James on Twitter or Kyle at NewCloud.com. Um, and I want to start by quickly talking about what is the difference between an interactive map and a virtual tour. And to me, it kind of comes down to a virtual tour is creating a virtual experience without actually being there. And it includes multimedia, pictures, video, audio, where an interactive map is more interacting with a user. It's providing a means to give input and get results. It, it makes this experience something that people can actually be a part of. Uh, so there is a little bit of a difference, but the way I always like to think about it with people is an interactive map is always a virtual tour, but a virtual tour isn't necessarily always an interactive map. So as you're thinking, well, maybe we're looking to do more of a virtual tour, or maybe we're looking for more of an interactive map, my recommendation, get the interactive map because then you tackle two, um, you can kill two birds with one stone there uh, because it gives you all of the features of both. And what I really want to talk about is five reasons why this interactive map is essential. Obviously, it's essential for recruitment purposes, um, which is exactly where we're going to start here. It is vital to the recruitment process. And to give you a little bit of data, to give you a little bit of um, uh, numbers around it, that this is an article from actually a couple years ago that came out in USA Today uh, talking about a student recruitment. And it, they actually instruct prospective students to take virtual tours as the number one step before actually visiting a college. Uh, this holds true for colleges, universities, and, and if any of you are out there uh, in independent schools, I think the same general concept holds true. It might be more of the parent that's out looking, um, but before you make a decision, you want to make sure that you're touring these things. And before you do that, it's very, very expensive, especially if we're talking about the college process, to visit a lot of them. So m the virtual tour is that top of the funnel for you. Uh, and let's think about this whole perspective decision process. And we're going to walk you through a little bit of a story here. So you're a student, you're thinking about where you want to go to school, where do you start? There are a lot of choices out there. And these are just a bunch of schools in Texas, right? Every state's the same way. You've got the University of Houston, Texas A&M, 
University of Texas, Texas Tech, uh, I guess Ohio, Oklahoma down there, but you get the idea. There's a lot of options that you have. So how are you going to narrow that list down, right? Well, U.S. News and World Report has their America's Best College. You know, a lot of a lot of high school seniors and juniors are going to be talking to their other friends, right? Getting ideas, um, seeing where they're going to go. NCAA, um, especially the males, but a lot of the females too, are, are into sports. So maybe they want to go to where they like the sporting team there. Mom and dad are really, really important in this decision-making process too, right? Um, I went to Wofford College. I'm, I'm almost a third-generation Wofford alum. Um, it definitely had an influence in where I decided I wanted to go to school. And then ultimately, it's all about that road trip, right? Like we were just saying, you want to take a road trip, but how are you going to decide which school? Because you can't just go to every single school. Think of the cost associated with that. I mean, we're seeing it just now, gas prices going up through the roof again. You simply cannot afford to take your, your children or your to 20 schools to see what they're all about. So how are you going to narrow that list from 5 to 20 or, or 15 or whatever it is down to the two or three schools that they're actually going to visit? Uh, it's just too expensive to do it any other way. And I think that's where your website really comes into play and specifically your interactive map. And this is some research that came out from Noel Levitz, you know, a top uh, industry uh, leader in research in higher education. And you'll notice here that uh, this is, you know, a list of some of their top most valuable interactive web features. The campus visit request form is right there, number two. And at the bottom of this top tier is a virtual tour. Very, very important there in that whole decision making process. Most use social media resources, right? This is this data at this point is no surprise to anybody. Facebook is number one. People use a lot of YouTube. They're watching a lot of videos, things like that. Uh, this data is about a year old now, so MySpace continues to go even further and further down. Maybe Twitter's making some headway now. But people are on Facebook. You know, you want to make sure that you can get things on Facebook that can be more engaging to them, and a virtual tour is one of those things you can actually get embedded into Facebook. Credible sources in the decision-making process. We see number one at the top of this list is the most credible uh, source is the campus visit. Uh, and you see further down online virtual tours of a campus. There are a lot of other things in here, but from a digital online standpoint, hopefully you're getting to see the picture here of how important this is um, in this whole decision-making process. Now I want to talk a little bit more about how this is a vital web feature, right? You know, we talked, we've seen some of that data, um, and this is from University Business. Uh, that a couple other uh, vendors, if you will, out there, kind of in this whole interactive space. And you know, it's not just me saying it. Obviously, other vendors are too. But I, I think this will kind of ring true to you. A tour is single-handedly the most important element of a college website. That's a pretty bold statement, isn't it? the single-handedly the most important element of a college website. We're going to look here at, at some of the other things and, and talk about the ROI of an interactive map in a minute, but bold, bold statement, and, and we want to think about that. Single-handedly most important. Um, students will get frustrated very quickly if they can't get the 10,000-foot view, right? Students come to your school because there's something unique and special about it, and that's why they want to come there. You have to be telling that story, and sometimes they can't easily see that. You know, use the virtual tour, use the interactive map across, along with some of your other uh, web elements to help them figure out what makes you special. And then that's not only going to help you get better students, but get the right students. You know, talking about a, a suite of killer web apps, um, I would argue that you know these are kind of the killer web apps that every college website needs and wants to have. Interactive map, um, we just said it's the single-handedly most important. Uh, course catalogs, right, we're going more and more digital with that and less less print. Having a course catalog there. Common app, specifically meaning the, uh, the, the application process. Um, common app is one of those free open source ones. Uh, net price calculator, this one's required by law now that you have to have a net price calculator so that people can see how much financial aid uh, they can possibly get by coming to your school. Uh, event calendar, really, really cool, really, really valuable, both for prospective students, but also current students, faculty, staff, and everybody that's a part of your community there. They want to be able to find out what are the events going on. 
Uh, an online video and blog really has a lot more to do with the social media scape and how are you creating content and making it more interactive and engaging. But you know, interactive map or interactive tours, they definitely fit on this list of killer, killer apps. Tangible return on investment. So we've talked a little bit about the recruitment value, but we've talked a little bit about the you know value of of, a, of having this from a from a valuable web app. Now I want to talk a little bit about the ROI on it, and we're gonna do we're gonna do a little bit of number crunching here, uh, and I want us to think backwards. And if we can think backwards from the value of a student, um, then we can establish the value of an interactive map. And all these numbers we're about to look at here, they are made up. Um, you know, your school is going to be different, but just kind of bear with me for a minute as we kind of walk through this. So let's do some math here. Let's say that you're a four-year institution, but the average student is only at your school for three years. You know, ideally we'd want to say they're all there for four, but let's just say it's three. Uh, students transfer, you've got students um, bouncing all over the place. Some students don't graduate uh, for whatever reason. But we also know that the, the cost per year for a student, let's keep it big and simple, let's say it's $20,000 a year. Um, it's kind of realistic now. And the average yearly discount for financial aid, tuition, scholarships, things like that, let's say that it's $10,000 per student. And if you have that number, these numbers, you can easily establish that every single student is worth $30,000 to your institution over the lifetime that they're there, right? Um, you can easily get these numbers from your financial aid office, from your admission office, and, and kind of do this yourself. But I'm going to say $30,000 is what each student's worth. So if we know that each student is worth $30,000 and we know that the conversion rate from, an, from a, an applicant to someone who actually becomes a student, let's say it's 20%, uh, it can easily be much higher or much lower then we know that every single applicant is worth 20% of $30,000 or $6,000, right? So every single person that applies is worth $6,000. Now we're starting to talk about where the value of a campus tour comes into play. You know, we just looked at that data at the beginning talking about how this is so, so important in the decision-making process. It's that first step. But we also know, and any admission counselor will tell you, if I can get a student to schedule a visit of my campus, they will apply to our school, right? It, it's one of those touchy-feely, all right, they've made a commitment, they really want to learn more, they're probably going to take the next step from here, right? So taking this math a little bit further, coming, you know, another step up the funnel, if you will, if an applicant's worth $6,000, and we know that the conversion rate of visitors, people who visit our campus, to applicants is 20%, then we know that each student visit is worth approximately $1,200 to our campus. Kind of makes you think, wow, that, that we need to make sure that every single one of those visitors gets the best treatment possible if they're worth, you know, if they're absolutely worth that much money um, independently. You know, when you start crunching the numbers up down the funnel, we see not everyone's going to kind of buy and become a student, but each visitor is worth that. And like I was talking, you know, this is all going down into this funnel. You know, what other things do you use to get students to apply? And not every student is going to go through this funnel of visiting Interactive Map, visiting campus, and then applying. But a large majority probably will, right? And that's why this is such a crucial recruitment tool because of this relationship, because of this thought process, because this is how prospective students make those decisions to apply. So we know that's the next step here. And if we know that every single visit is worth $1,200, and let's just throw a, a conversion rate uh, of 5%. So let's, that meaning if you have an interactive map on your, camp, on, your, on your website and you've got a nice schedule of visit button over there on the right-hand side, 5% um, of those people actually convert on it. They go and click through, they schedule a visit. So we know that every single person visiting your map is worth $60, $60 a person. The question to ask, do you think 1,000 people would view your map in a month? If so, 
then having a map is worth $60,000 to you per month. Like, that's pretty compelling ROI right there. Um, you know, when you're talking about activities that you can be spending your money on to help student recruitment, um, this is one of the big ones. And this is why we saw earlier that an interactive map is single-handedly the most important feature you can have on your website because it has this ability to make such a large impact on the decision of students who actually apply to your school. And if you want to do all these numbers for yourself, you can see it down here in the bottom right-hand corner, bit.ly, uh, bit.ly slash map dash ROI. We've actually put together a um, Google spreadsheet where you can take it, you know, download it, um, you know, download it to an Excel spreadsheet and put in your own numbers. You know, um, play with the numbers and, and see was an interactive map worth to your school per month? Um, you know, these are just rough estimates, as I said, but there's real value in this. Um, real, real value in this from the recruitment standpoint. But I don't want us to lose sight of all of our audiences, right? Yes, this is a valuable recruitment tool, but it doesn't have to be singularly purposed around recruitment. That interactive map is important for all your external audiences and internal audiences. Think about alumni, right? That if an alumni has, is coming back to homecoming or some sort of event you have, maybe they haven't been to the campus in 10, 15 years. Maybe you've got a whole new wing of campus. Maybe building names have changed. You know, these kind of things happen. An interactive map can be that tool that they can use to get associated with what is what um, before they make that appearance. But also from an alumni donation standpoint, if you're doing a big annual fund to raise money um, for you know, new student dorms, uh, a new science building, whatever it is, interactive map's a pretty cool way to show where that building's going to be uh, and what is it, what's its future impact going to be that tells that complete story of not just the building but how it fits into the old overall campus as a whole. You know, current students obviously can be a big audience for this. Uh, the reason for that is think about freshmen who are on your campus for the first year. They're going through and looking at their schedule. Um, maybe they've got um, classes in buildings they don't know where they are. They've never heard of them before. Maybe an interactive map could help them find those campuses or those, those buildings on campus those, and find out where uh, their classes are. But also, maybe there's just areas of campus they don't regularly visit, depending on how big or small your campus is. So it can be valuable for current students, too. Athletic fans, right? Um, if you've got a big football team or any other sport, if you've got you know, visiting teams coming from, from you know, out of town, their families are probably going to come, too. Well, an interactive map can help them know where the stadium is on campus, um, easily find out where parking is. Uh, you know, maybe while they're visiting uh, your campus, maybe they want to tour a little bit more than, by themselves and, and get a little bit more history of certain buildings. Interactive Map's a great feature for them, too. Event speakers, right? This is uh, Obama, you know, had, uh, was visiting University of Auburn uh, a little over a year ago uh, after they won the national champion. So maybe you're not going to get Obama. Uh, but right now we are going through the whole GOP um, process to see who's going to be our, our you know, next presidential candidate, they're bouncing around to a lot of college campuses. If you have these kind of major events or just any sort of speaker, it uh, could be a commencement. You, they probably have a little bit of following, want to follow your, find out more about your campus too. Once again, interactive map comes into play. Conferences, right? Maybe your school holds some sort of conference, um, no matter what it could be. Um, these are new individuals that are coming to your campus that don't really know a lot about it. Interactive map. Uh, be a great, great resource for them. Same for camps. Uh, if you have, you know, your, your campus is kind of empty on the summertime, so you fill in the gaps by having counts or camps come in. It could be a great, great tool for the counselors or the, the campers and their parents. And there's hundreds of other events. This is actually a picture. I mentioned that I went to Wofford and I worked at Wofford uh, for many, many years. Uh, Wofford College has the Carolina Panthers come to their to their campus every year for spring training, so um, or I guess fall training, um, preseason training, whatever they call it in football. Uh, so these kind of things matter too because you have a large audience that comes to watch it. So whatever other external audiences you have, interactive map can also be really, really valuable to them. And naturally, 
coming full circle here, prospective students, right? You know, really, really valuable, really, really important there. Um, any questions coming in so far? I think we must be good. All right. Um, we're good. Yeah, we're good for now, Kyle. I think we can keep plugging along. I have a couple that I'm churning up in my brain right now. This is all great stuff, so thanks. <laughs> great, great. Well, yeah, we've got probably five, ten more minutes here. Um, going through a lot of stuff here. And the fifth and final uh, bullet point that I want to really address is, is everyone else already has one. In some form or fashion, everybody else already has an interactive map. Whether that being they just have a PDF on their website that has a picture of campus or, or a map of campus and, you know, here's where what buildings are, or they're using some sort of Google Maps API uh, or whatever, everybody's doing it to some extent because, you know, a campus makes a really, really uh, valuable reason to have a map. So go out there and research what others are doing. Look at what your peer competitors are doing. Look what other schools in your area are doing. Look what other schools are, are just kind of doing in general. Um, you'll get lots of ideas about what is working and what's not working. But what I really want to talk about is things not to do. Uh, I think it's a whole lot more important and valuable and talk about what not to do instead of to necessarily say you have to do X, Y, and Z because for every school their needs and their resources are totally different. Um, some schools are going to want to have a whole lot of video because they can afford video. Some schools can tell a great compelling story with photography. Some stories can tell a great some schools can tell a great story through content and text. So you know I'm not going to tell you what to do, but let's talk about ways not to fail, not to, to to miss the hoop, if you will, here, like like the dog here. Um, three things off the bat: using Flash. I'm I'm very very big component against not using Flash. One, it's inaccessible. Um, college and universities are required by law to be Section 508 compliant. Flash is not 508 compliant. Period. So right then and there, you're, you're kind of breaking the law. I mean, yes, somebody has to come for you, and there's a lot more serious um, offenses you can do, but it's, it's a no-no, and it creates a maintenance nightmare. And what I mean by that is who has somebody on their staff who's an expert in Flash? If you have a third-party development company or whoever builds you an interactive map in Flash, how are you going to update it? How are you – is your campus growing? Are you adding new buildings? Um, is – do you have a new donor that just came along and gave you a million dollars to rename your Student Life Center? How are you going to go rename that building? Um, Flash makes all this a big, big challenge. So don't use Flash. Um, only images. Um, and what I mean by don't only use images, you know, include more content than just a map with some photo galleries. Tours need content, ton, context, ton text. You know, include descriptions, building descriptions, tell the history of buildings. You know, video, audio can also be very, very compelling too. Uh, integrated in with social media. And don't ignore updates. You know, once again, using Flash can make this difficult, but keep building information and galleries fresh. Uh, your virtual tour needs to needs the power to entice real visits. Right? Meaning you can easily get in there and, and if if there are four seasons uh, maybe you have four different pictures of, of the campus. Uh, it's pretty easy to go out and take a, a camera one day, get some fresh air, and snap some pictures. You know, maybe the, the leaves are changing and make a great, great photo op of, of a building. Uh, it really keeps your content fresh um, and timely. Um, so, you know, make sure that you're doing those kind of things. Same thing for a website. You know, you can't just neglect it. So, the next thing here is Give me a starting point. This is University of Kentucky, and all I see is a whole bunch of stops here, but I have no idea where to start. You know, is there is there a building that's maybe marked number one? Um, I'm visiting. I don't even know where I'm looking for. There's no ability to really search easily. Um, to help your visitors get going, maybe you start them at, at Admission Central um, or somewhere else, depending on your tour, your audience. Don't overwhelm with people with too many options. Uh, this is Emory University's, and, and quite frankly, I think it's just kind of overwhelming. I've got way too many things here that I can kind of choose from, and because of that, you cause paralysis. Um, anybody out there that's read uh, Steve Crux, Don't Make Me Think, um, I think 
that also comes true for an interactive map. You know, you don't want your visitors to have to think they just just know what to do and where to go and what to look at. So keep it simple. Slow load times, and this is a big pet peeve of mine. Uh, it's also really, really important for, for search engines, too, and it goes along with the inaccessibility. Um, another reason Flash is kind of a no-no. If it takes your interactive map a while to load, people lose interest in it. They're a lot less likely to stay and wait on it uh, before they just move on to something else. Something else will draw their attention, some other piece of eye candy. And especially if it takes a long time to load and then they can't figure out what to do. Uh, so make sure that it's optimized. There are a lot of ways you can optimize stuff. You know, make sure your images are optimized uh, because every single person that views it, you want it to load as fast as possible. Just generally confusing. Uh, this, this virtual tour, like, you don't really know where to start. It's got a little welcome here and then some bullet points coming out, the locations, academics, things to do, but it's still very, very, very confusing. Uh, people understand how to use maps, especially if it has a layout similar to something like a Google Maps or a MapQuest. Like, that has become standard, ingrained in people's um, brains about how to use those features. I wouldn't recommend, you know, going too far away from that because once again, you have the ability to lose people. They don't know what to do. They get confused. So keep it simple and don't make it confusing trying to come up with some novel idea that's completely different because then no one will know how to use it. And that's it. Looks like I did a pretty good job here. We're uh, right at half an hour. Um, you want to go ahead and start feeding me some of those questions that maybe people have? Yeah, definitely. So um, one of the first questions is that that survey you had by Noah Levitz. Can you share that with us later um, and or we'll send it out in the follow-up email. Is that all right? Yeah, I can definitely do that. I can definitely okay. do that. Sounds great. Thank you. People are very interested in statistics, I think. Sure. So, they just came out with a new one, too, and I think I've got uh, the PDFs versions of both of those, so I can definitely give you those. Really great. Okay, thank you. So. One of the first questions that comes to mind for, for me and for us, and um, you and I were chatting a little bit about this earlier, so how do, how do schools and institutions make these more um, integrated with social media, especially with some of those, um, those platforms such as Foursquare and, and some of the check-in processes? That's a great question, and I think a lot of that has to do with GPS locations on campus is one way. Uh, depending on how um, you build your map, you know, if, if this is something you're really looking to do, um, shoot me an email. I mean, there's my email at the bottom of the screen. I'd love to talk to you about what New Cloud does and, and share some of that. But just in general, you want to be thinking about how to integrate GPS so that, um, you know, not only social, but I think this also ties into mobile too, right? Um, you know, both those kind of come to the forefront here that maybe I'm on campus and I want to check in through a social channel or maybe there's an event and I want to share with people that I'm here, um, you know, I need some sort of way to, to interact with it and get the mobile coordinates. And, you know, mobile allows you to do that along with doing through, you know, Foursquare, uh, Zawala, Guala, um, you know, scavenger, things like that. Great. Um, you know, you were talking earlier about re-engaging alumni, um, and for me that, that really stood out. I went to the journalism school at the University of Missouri, and they yeah. redid the J school the year after I left. <laughs> and so right. I was able at least to see through the email newsletters that I was getting, they had a great, um, they had like a live cam going, um, and then they had maps to show off the interior, but it made me feel connected in a way, you know, being on the East Coast, it's hard for me to get back to Missouri. So right. it was a really nice way for me to stay connected. Um, is there a way to uh, integrate really clear calls to action in some of these maps so you can actually, you know, to, to change, you know, convert some of the people like me that are looking into maybe donors? Right. Yeah, I, th I think you can, you can do both. And, and I guess one of the ways that I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do at New Cloud, but um, our whole thing is built in such a way where you build your whole map in our back end and we just give you an embed script. Very similar to like what you do if you go to YouTube, you get an embed script. If you want to embed that map on, on, a, on a page on your alumni development section that has clear giving opportunities above it, you can do that just as easy as if you were to embed it on a page in your um, admission section of your website that has clear call to actions around 
um, schedule a visit, apply today, ask a question of a counselor, things like that. Uh, so it, it's really just thinking about where are your opportunities to leverage this valuable web feature and taking it uh, from there. And you know, I just now thought of another one to go back to your question around social media. Um, people are always looking for things on Facebook and with 99% of, of prospective students on Facebook now, if they come and visit your, your Facebook fan page for your school, well, it's really easy to also get another tab over there on the left-hand side that says, you know, campus tour, interactive map, and embed that tour right there in Facebook. Um, you know, get more content in those channels where your audiences are. Yeah. A and once again, get those call to action buttons there too. Right. <laughs> get them get <laughs> making the moves, right? Right. Um, so Denny Carter asked, um, if, if gas prices spike to the 5 or $6 mark, which some people are speculating, do you mm -hmm. think um, online campus tours will become even more important, and will they someday replace the traditional in-person tour? That's a great question. Um, I know that, you know, I've talked I've talk to many, many admission counselors, and they always tell me that if I can get someone to visit our campus, they'll apply. I don't ever think that, I mean, this is just me from personal experience, I would never want to apply to a school that I never visited. So, you know, we might only see students visiting the campus that they ultimately want to apply to and getting that list narrowed down even further. So I do think it's going to play a, a big role there, but I, personally, I don't ever see it completely replacing it. I just think that it's going to be all the more reason that your people that actually visit uh, and schedule those visits are going to be even more valuable because it's going to be a, a lot more, they're going to be a lot more likely to actually come to your school or really want to come to your school because as you mentioned, it's just too expensive to, to waste a lot of time visiting a lot of schools. Right, yeah, I think I think you're right on the mark. I, I know for a lot of students that are exploring and definitely in the independent school world, they want to get on campus and see how they fit in, right? They want to see Absolutely. how they, they fit into the community. So I think think it, it'll you know be harder for people to go but I think it's also a good representation you know maybe um, they weren't thinking about visiting your school campus but if you have a really compelling interactive campus map and they're they're blown away by the, the architecture or the setup or whatnot then maybe it's a more you know a tipping point to get them on campus so I that's a good completely agree. And, and you know especially for independent schools you know your audience might be a little bit more geared towards parents um, but even then, you know, parents are definitely not going to go spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars without visiting the school and actually face to face talking to people. Right, definitely. So the other thing that keeps coming up in um, in a lot of the workshops that we do is that videos are kind of like the next big thing, right? And you mentioned how some schools will integrate um, videos versus photos. Is there one that works better in your in, in interactive campus maps? I actually like a combination of both. Mm -hmm. um, the way most maps work is you kind of have um, on the map you've got stops, if you will, or, or locations that people kind of visit. And so what a lot of maps, you know, our software and a lot of others out there is kind of associate videos and images with stops. So if you're going to do something more of a virtual tour, you might have a tour guide or multiple tour guides that you click on a stop and they give you the history and the information about that building um, in a video, text, you know, pictures and stuff like that. And I think that's really a compelling way to do it because it's almost like getting that tour without actually having to walk around campus and spend the day of travel. Right. So then that also makes me think, you know, from a role perspective, um, you know, maybe someone wants to see what it's like to be uh, a ski racer at a, an independent school in Vermont, um, or someone wants to see what it's like to be a journalism major at the University of Missouri. Are, are some schools doing, um, you know, role-guided tours? I haven't seen so much, I haven't seen people go that far into it yet. Uh, what a lot of them do is like to get a, you know, a diverse range of, of maybe three or four students as kind of their tour guides. And depending on what building you are on, you know, if you're on maybe the, the science wing, it might be someone who's maybe a biology major, um, or if you're on another wing, it might be a political science person, um, kind of giving the tour of those sections of campus. Um, but I haven't really seen it go to the range of, of you know, multiple tour guides doing the whole campus. But I, I don't see why anybody couldn't do that. I think it's a good idea. If you know what your strength is, 
Um, I mean, I'm I'm always a big big proponent of you know tell your school story, and if your if your strength is is one of those specific things, then that's the story you want to tell, um, because that's your compelling value proposition. Yeah, I'm with you. So um, Dana Sheehan asked if maybe after all of this as well, if you could share some good examples of, of virtual tour, tours so schools have some idea to um, where they should aspire towards. Does that sound all right? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what I, what I can actually do is um, we can include a link in an email. We've got a whole you know, link to our whole portfolio of, of our customers. Uh, I think they're all good examples, and what we've also done is kind of talk to them about a little bit about what makes each of them a little bit different and why some are better than others um, you know, in, in certain respects. I wouldn't say any one is necessarily better than another, but some do a lot better job of, of utilizing photography. Some do a lot better job of utilizing video and kind of talk about why, but I can definitely share a link to that. Okay, sounds great. All right, well, I think that's it. Kyle, if you have anything else you want to add before we sign off, I think we're um, wrapped up with our questions. And thanks so much for pulling all of uh, this together. We, you know, I do want to mention we have um, a big event coming up on April 4th. It's the Ed Social Media Summit, and it's out in San Francisco. Um, we have seven really compelling speakers, and Kyle actually um, was a great interview questions, so there's a Q&A over on .edu Guru about the summit, um, but we are uh, headed out there on April 4th, so please join us if you're able. You can find out more information at edsocialmedia.com slash summit. Um, we have another webinar coming up in two weeks, actually, with Integral, so Brandon Croak, yes. um, uh, the community manager over at Integral, is going to talk more about um, uh, measuring social engagement for admissions, so you can sign up for that on edsocialmedia.com. Um, and then I always like to thank our sponsors, Admissions Quest and Proof, for supporting this free series. So either contact Kyle after the webinar is finished, his contact information is on the screen, or you can shoot me an email at info at edsocialmedia.com, um, and we will each follow up with um, all of you and get you the recorded webinar as well. So thanks again, Kyle. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity. And everybody, uh, let me know if I can help. Sounds great. Thanks. See you all later. Take care.